I sometimes get people asking how much their Seiko watch is worth and I normally go to eBay and look at past prices but there are also a couple of tips and tricks that I use to try and make that information a bit more accurate so I'm going to go through them in this video and as an example I'm going to use this um, Seiko SKX031 I nearly forgot then uh, 7S260040 so like most Seikos it has two model numbers and we can use that to our advantage I'm going to just use this as an example and we'll try and find out the value so let's head over to eBay and see exactly how I do it. Okay, here we are on eBay.com and I haven't signed in because I want to demonstrate that you don't even need an account to be able to use this method. First of all, we're gonna do a simple search for this Seiko SKX031. And that gives us 187 results, okay. But I'm gonna use another little trick here, which is to use brackets and add another search term. So like most Seiko watches, it's got two model numbers. The other one is 7S260040. And I'm separating these with a comma. So this means we're gonna search for Seiko SKX031 or 7S260040. Let's do a search and see what happens. And now we get 283 results, much more, that's great. But there are lots of things we don't need, so we're gonna filter through them in a minute. But first we go on to the next step. Now we're seeing watches for sale here and the sellers could put crazy prices on there. It doesn't really mean anything. We want to look at past prices. To do that, we go to the advanced link next to the search button. And on mobile, this is a filter. Okay, and we scroll down a little bit and we can see sold items. We wanna check that. Completed items will be checked as well. That's fine, just ignore it and search again. Good, we're only seeing things that have sold, but we're seeing a mixture of auction sales and buy it now instant sales. I prefer to ignore those because it could be one person who's got loads of money and is quite happy to pay a high price to just buy it right now. What we really wanna see is some kind of competition between buyers to get a more accurate reflection of the price. So let's click on auction here, which will only show auction results. There we go, we're getting closer. Now, if we look through this list, there are lots of things that we don't need. So the watch I'm using as an example has got a black bezel and it doesn't have a stainless steel strap, it has a rubber one. So I'm gonna try and remove as many of those as possible from the results. The Pepsi bezel, the red and blue bezel, uh, is actually SKX033. So I'm going to remove that by using a hyphen in the search terms. So a hyphen, and it's XKX033, I don't want that. Also, sometimes it's called Pepsi, so let's do hyphen Pepsi. That'll get rid of any Pepsi bezels. And I wanna get rid of as many stainless steel bracelets in the results as possible, so hyphen stainless. I'm sure there'll still be some, but that's gonna work pretty well, I think. So let's search again. Okay, we're now down to 34 results, and we could keep refining it with removing or adding more search terms, but I think this is pretty good. The final thing I want to do is to try and ignore um, ones that have one or two bids. And that's because it could be a really high priced item, but one person wanted it and so they were happy to bid and they got it. Like this one here, just got one bid. Maybe that's not an accurate reflection of the price compared to something that has got, for example, seven bids. So I want to look for things that have got more bids because that means there was more competition between buyers and probably it's gonna be a more sort of realistic valuation. To do that at the top, I'm gonna to reorder these results. So over here on the right, we've got ended recently. I'm gonna change that to number of bids most first. This is actually not available on mobile that I could find unfortunately, but anyway, here we go. So I try to usually ignore the top two or three because maybe there was a bidding war or something going on there. And then if we sort of go down a bit to sort of average number of bids, now I think we're seeing a more sort of accurate result. Oh, there's another Pepsi still in there, Never mind. Okay, these are stainless steel. Maybe we'll see something that's exactly like mine. They're all pretty much stainless steel, aren't they? Okay, maybe mine is quite unusual then. <laughs> anyway, we're seeing, oh, there we go. Um, this is actually in Japanese yen because I'm in Japan, but here we go. Uh, about 20,000 yen, which is roughly, what, maybe $150 or so. 
I think that's probably a realistic valuation, looking at the average of what these are. Some are higher, some are lower, but at least we're getting more or less in the ballpark and there don't seem to be any really crazy high prices there. So overall, that's what I do to get a more or less realistic valuation, whether I'm selling a watch, uh, whether I'm thinking of buying a watch, or I just wanna know what it's worth. <laughs> Hopefully that's helpful for you. I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching.